Um, welcome everybody. Uh, Rafaela, thank you for the invitation. It's it's great to be here again. Of course, the first time I was not yet a member of Konghatan, our collective, and now I am. I am the, the newest member of Konghatan, not the youngest. <laughs> uh, super happy to be here today and we can talk about a collective and, uh, you know, bear in mind that at its core, a collective is a group of people who enjoy spending time together. And yeah, that's how it starts. What they do with that time determines the kind of collective they are, right? So Kwan uh one of the main things we do is we edit a scene, such as the ones you see over there. Uh, and we take turns rotating the task of editing the scene among the members. So every month, different member becomes the editor. And that's quite an interesting process in itself. And all the members contribute to every issue. Uh, so that's one of the things that we that we do. Uh, we also organize workshops, uh, sometimes photography, sometimes uh, scene making workshops. We uh, have curated a special night of film screenings as well. So like a miniature festival. And um, what else do we do? We organize artist talks every month. Uh, so. We went to a book fair and uh, had a chance to interact with the public and, you know, sort of show our scenes physically as well, which was great. And uh, I'm going to be moderating today. I'm not going to be talking as much because uh, I've been here before, right, Rafaela? So, yes. <laughs> um, I have here three of the founding members of Manhattan, William Min, Jiwa Kim, and uh, Kosang Choi. Uh, and they will be uh, answering some of my questions. So because we have a short amount of time, I'm going to ask really hard questions, <laughs> <laughs> not to waste anybody's time. So answer them the best way you can. Uh, no pressure. <laughs> um, I'm joking. I will just have a conversation. But let's start it off with this question. Um, what was life like before? What's life? Now that we're in um, I've lived in New York for 22 years, and I decided to come back to Korea two and a half years ago. Um, I thought it was kind of weird when I meet my uh, photographers in Korea, I asked them, okay, what's what's good? What's, what, where is the good exhibitions now? And like, how do you make this work? And they, are, they were being kind of secret and not to tell me everything. And later on, I assumed that it is, since it is very small community, and when someone say something is good or something is like, giving a compliment can be seen as a political uh, it can it can it can be read as a political relationship and i was uh i was kind of uh i didn't like it and i want to share my idea i want to share my thoughts and i want to tell okay oh this show is super nice and you gotta watch it you gotta see it and i met harry young and Okyun, who is not, uh, who didn't come today. And we've been a good friend for like many years. And we all came back to Korea in past few years. And we know that we're going to hang out regularly. And then we decide that, okay, let's uh, meet once in a month and share the idea, share what's going on. and catch up each other um, so that we can really continue our own work positive ways. So that that's that's how we um, start to uh, start the Aquang Dan. But at the time we did we don't know what to call us and nobody called as an art collective. 
And I thought it's really important to have this kind of activity so that I can balance my life. You know, if I if I just focus on my own work for a long time, I I I want something to um uh I need events. I need to you know like when when I first got uh when I'm really interested into the art, it was fun. I liked but when I really focus on my own work, I kind of get a sense that I lost the fun part. But when I play with them and I share the ideas with uh, my friends, then I find myself that, okay, I'm starting to uh, finding a fun part again so that it makes a really good balance between my personal work and this collective work so that I can really push my artistic creativity even further than um, I could do by myself. And that's how I've been doing. <laughs> uh, I'm Jiwon Kim, and I'm the only uh, member who spent uh, many times in, uh, in Europe. I lived in uh, 13 years in Germany, and I went to the art school, and um, I learned... Um, kind of a performance, uh, installation, um, video, and then photography um, at, at the end. And somehow I began to work uh, with photography uh, the most, but I haven't had friends uh, who makes uh, photography uh, like me. So I, I, in Europe, I almost, I was almost like Einstein, so it's, kind of uh, working and doing all things alone, like one man band. And uh, after COVID, I uh, came back to Korea and I met this club. Friend. But, uh, so they asked me to join. So uh, I, at the moment, I had no plan to do in, in Korean art since. So why not? So I joined. Um, now I have um, yeah, good friends and who who can talk about what work and you know, share things, information. So I feel great uh, to be a member of this community. Hello, uh, I'm Hye Ryong Min. Um, yes, as uh, Ko Sang said. Um, as Korean in New York, it was a Korean photographer uh, was really like we can count even, you know, who uh, does photography in New York, uh, who comes back and forth between New York and Korea to do the work. So we were the gang in there kind of, you know, it was very casual and kind of uh, automatic setting. But uh, once we came here, we were still outsider and I realized that um we needed support so I mean we, we used to meet anyway and then we wanted to do something more productive uh than just you know being together because we we're gonna meet anyway so for other uh community who were surprised to see a collective because they said um it's not it's not usual to see collective, especially um photography. They're very isolated individually. And we all work by by ourselves, uh sure. like a one man business. So it's really nice to have have somebody who can support uh in a good way or bad way, or you know, who can say good things or bad things, who can share unfinished work, or you know, I can say that exhibition. Yes, we can say that's beautiful exhibition, but we can also say that's bad exhibition <laughs> with each other. And then we started seeing, you know, other photographers from other countries or, you know, from New York from different time. And we started inviting them to join Bangatan. And then uh, I realized that in New York, Jaime was like a hub 
for all the connection. So he didn't need my help. I I had to join his meeting then I can get to meet everybody there. But he is a stranger here. So we asked him to join. So it became uh very naturally um uh, the the gangs in, in Seoul. So yeah, it's very supportive uh to each other and we like to support other uh photographers, young photographers who is curious to talk or share work, any uh event that we have. Um yeah, thank you. Thank you for your you, you know your answers, very thoughtful answers to the question. And I mean it's true, uh part of the group of Kwang Haptan is that we've all spent a significant part of our life abroad. Um, you know, I, I feel particularly comfortable because I can speak English <laughs> in Kwang Haptan and otherwise my Korean is good enough to order food at a restaurant or chit chat on a street corner, but not much else. Um, so that's one of the things that also I think helps define a collective is this idea of returning and trying to find a way to fit in. Um, in fact, we had our first uh, group exhibition at Rafaela attended um, not so long ago, and it was entitled Grounding, Grounding, which is really one of the greatest gifts that the collective has given to me personally in this community, which I was uh, so sorely meeting to reconnect with. I mean, in New York, after living in New York for you know, most of my adult life, I had built a very extensive network of colleagues and students and friends and institutional pathways to creating work and presenting work. And um, so here we are, you know, in Korea, coming together to do something. Uh, my next question to you is, how do you see your professional practice in terms of quantity? Part of what we do at Quantum is completely separate. Is there any sort of exchange between those sides? Yeah, it's it's not it is definitely not like separated. It is it shares a lot of portions. Um personally my work is tend to accept the events in my daily lives. But before then, I I found the uh I try to work in like mountains, like in the interior in, in the in field, like nobody uh nobody there. I only focus on the uh the shape of shapes and gestures of trees and leaves but now i start to take pictures of more people and what's going on in my daily lives and in in the activity of pangaptan as i met, uh, mentioned earlier um each of our members pick a theme which uh, that is kind of important to their lives at this moment and it gives it opens up uh, the chances that I can think about new uh, way of looking at my daily lives. And every month we have to create new uh, photo works, and I have to write some like short sentences. That 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 gives me kind of refresh of uh, my artistic vision and. Yeah, it helped my whole process, the practices. Kind of pacing. Uh, I'm uh, using the opportunity as an experiment, uh, what I wanted to do. For example, we are making zines, uh, but in many different forms, forms and techniques. So I uh, use some different types of technique to make a theme or with the theme uh, uh, yeah it's just so uh, experiment and playful a playful experiment uh, 
that's so different. Um, the because we choose the the theme every month, and then we have to all the members have to submit some numbers of the photos and the text for the scene of the month. Uh, you know, for our own for my own project, um, there's more uh like intense um time to work like for photograph or editing or writing but for that i have to pause otherwise i'll just you know go non-stop and it's kind of forced to pause of course it's like a homework so you get stressed out sometimes but otherwise when will you take a break and when we take a break to go to the um, exhibition, I would just say, okay, I'd rather spend extra time to work my artist statement, but I have to. So it's, it's in a good way. I like this uh, break uh, with Pangatan. And also I realized that uh, because we're doing a lot of uh, events and activities, whenever I see other people, they recognized us as Kwangapdan. You know, sometimes first thing that somebody sees me, uh, the first question they ask is about Kwangapdan, not about my work. And <laughs> it's very yeah, unusual. And then I like it. So I like that it's moving, you know, things in the in the art art uh, world in a way. Um, before we go any further, actually, I'm, I'm sure there's people in the audience uh, wondering about the word itself, the title of the collective, Kong um, Tan. Can you speak to that, Hosang? Um, I think, I mean, we didn't have name in the beginning. I think we were searching for a really good name after a few months of uh, activities. And by the time ChatGPT was like booming, so one of our member, Park Young, um, had, had a conversation with ChatGPT and it gave us a list of uh, weird names, weird or cliches. And one of, one of it is a Kwangapdan, which is, uh, if, which I, translated literally is a like photo synthesizing gang or the group of photos into doing photosynthesizes and we kind of liked it you know we we're doing photography and really there's a chemical reaction so and if korean uh, hear the name Gwanghapdan, it is kind of a uh, very old uh Old fashioned, it, it sounds like very old fashioned name, and we, we also like that uh, the sense. <laughs> and, and that name, I maybe I'm wrong because I don't understand the subtle piece of Korean, uh, but it has a kind of happy tone to it or inviting to me, and, and that's part of our collective as well. We reach out to other uh, artists, to even other collectives. Um, to see what they're doing and could we, you know, like have some kind of bridge between ourselves and other people in the community and that's that's part of what we enjoy doing. Um, and it's it's been a really short time, right? When when did the collective start? It's been two years. Two years. Two years and already things have changed. Um, for example, when I first joined the collective, um, there were a number of issues that had already been produced for the scenes, but they had been produced internally as a, just as a creative lab, as a playful way of extending artistic practice. And then there was a shift and all of a sudden we decided like, okay, uh, why don't we make a limited edition scene and have it available to say. And that's different, right? When you're putting out a product and you're making an edition of 30, uh, or when you're going to book fairs to present the finished works or um, 
uh, we got a, a letter from the Museum of Fine Arts Houston all of a sudden, and they they bought every every scene for their library. Um, and you know we had to discuss that. So can we sell the scenes that were not meant for sale, or do we? You know, so things shift even in a short span of two years. Things shift. One of our members. Um, has recently become a monk. Yes. If you see a picture in the slideshow, but, but the, there's a a young man wearing the ropes. That's him. <laughs> so, you know, our our graphic designer, Mingyu, uh, became a, a monk recently. And, uh, we miss him like crazy, but he still occasionally collaborates, right? <laughs> even though even though he's in the monastery and shouldn't be doing this, you know, he still gives kind of, <laughs> um, so, you know, a collective, I think, is an organic kind of entity that will keep evolving and shifting and changing over time. Um, and I was just wondering if any of you have a vision of, if you think about five years from now, where do you see it? Uh, we had a meeting uh, not long ago um, because our uh, it's been two years as uh, I mentioned and uh, we've been producing the zines for the sale for a um, year and a half I guess and it's really challenging. It's different, um, you know, how we do for our, for each other uh, was of course more casual and, you know, uh, we can make, when we had like a member of six or five, we can make five copies and then you exchange each other. But then uh, we had to make 20, 30, 40. Then the whole process had, had to change and then it was challenging to also uh have it out in different ways you know we have to say things differently on the social media or we have to find a book fair or if to find the uh, bookstores um so it, we had so we we learned a lot of things and we met a lot of people in that way um uh however uh from last meeting that we had we we're thinking of uh making a little shift for uh next year uh we will still you know produce something and you know share things and we'll make an event as we've been doing but a little bit differently you know sometimes you know we want to focus on uh our own project more than uh, the Kwang Hapdan work, you know, we so we're trying to think how to do that. So we will have a uh, more clearer uh, idea uh, in coming month and for the next year. So just like that, um, I think we will, um, I don't know if I should call it um, better or not it's just you know i think different shape you will make a different shape uh by the time and then uh try different things but still moving somewhere yeah so I, that's what i hope also hope for yeah yeah so past two years we've been gradually like our group has been evolving by the uh, aspects of um, people in this in the Korean photo community, and in and I wanted to. I mean that that's that's how I wanted the the community run, and we get a lot of attentions because usually what we are doing is happens when they are twenties. <laughs> But in Korea, that there is no like such a collective doing what we are doing in their like forties, 
fifties, so that people think, "Wow, that's 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 weird." And <laughs> we are making some like new type of model in Korean community. And there are so many followers in college kids. Like that's that's how what they wanted to do, but. There was no no case, no no role models doing in, um, in in the mid career artist. So I think we Kwangatan has a brand power, and I think it is really important to build even stronger, build it even stronger, so that we can we all of each our member can get advantage of by the brand of Kwangatan at the end. That that's what I am expecting. Okay, great. So to close this little segment, um, maybe you could share a, a special memory of something that when you think about our experience of the last however like maybe six months, maybe a couple of years. Something that strikes you as having been a special moment. I mean, of course, wherever I'm the uh, editor in chief uh, for the the scene, no matter how I prepared, I had to stay up all night and night before the meeting, and then working by hand. He's yeah, he knows. I'm her husband. <laughs> That's why I know. Yeah. Um, it's so hard, but it's so much fun to make something uh, in hand, you know, printing and then like uh, binding, sewing and gluing things. So I had uh, those memories, uh, but for myself, uh, my best memory was uh, last December. I was uh, uh, awarded uh, as one of three photographers by KTNG uh Sang Sang Madang, uh, they chose three photographers uh, for the year. And then they at the end of the year, they have a presentation. So those three photographers had to make a presentation in their, in their um, yeah, movie theater. Um, it's, I was really nervous. And I had a portfolio there, and then I had a screen on. And like seven gangs came in in a row <laughs> and they supported me so much and they asked me great questions that uh, the presentation itself was not long and then I had to do in a certain way. They asked me brilliant questions that I can express more about that work because they know my work so well. So that... I felt like I was very, um, like a like a reach that I have everybody. I have I have the support in my back, so I really appreciated that. And this year, this coming year, she will be the presenter at Sang Sang Madang, so we will support her. <laughs> um. Summer. Um, somehow I had two em uh, two empty uh, studio, so I wanted to use uh, this empty uh, studio for for some event. So I curated a video screening program. So it it is called Kwangapdan International Film Screening GIF, and uh, I invited. Uh, some uh, our members video work and some other uh, German um, artists as well so it was quite a hit right <laughs> <laughs> so um, we uh, phot photographer uh, works usually uh, video work as well so I wanted to uh, share this type of um, different um, um, area of our own work. And so we organize a lot of 
events, uh, film festival, uh, and also we doing small artist talk. Uh, as an artist, I've been attending to many artist talk and I've been talking to exhibitions, my exhibitions, but there was a little, there's always a lack that I cannot really, um, it doesn't really uh, deliver so that we organized a special artist talk that we don't use microphone, we don't use speaker, we don't use projector. We invite the artist, artist supposed to bring physical print and we sit around the table. We limit uh, num the, um, the visitors, like not participants, like nine people. Because I believe in, there's certain things only can be shared within a small group with the uh, through the uh, through the voice, you know, without any technical um, advantage. And so, which is called a Guangap night, as we usually do, happens at night. And I really love to, you know, meet new participants, new people, get to know the new artist so that I can really hear those things that I've never been heard from anywhere else. And, oh yeah, I really love to meet people through these photo events, which is Kwon do said in his talking. But so, yeah, so every event is very special for me and I will like to keep it going. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. The first part is... And now we can open to the Q&A.